Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today we are actually going to be going over the second hank of yarn that I dyed. So I will be back in a sec. So welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today I am going to be showing you the technique that I used to dye the second hank of yarn that I've ever dyed. Um, and I'm really excited to see what you guys think and get your thoughts and stuff on it just like with the first hank of yarn. Uh, with this one, I hand painted it. Again, I did follow Rebecca with Chemnitz. Um, so if you want to find out, you know, like get more detail information about the process and the ins and outs and the hows and the whys and everything else, I highly suggest that you go ahead and check her channel out. The link is in the description box below as well as the top pinned comment. And of course she goes through a lot of it. Um, I had searched her videos, I think doing like hand painted, um, hand painted uh, yarn with um, food coloring or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was that I searched, but that's how I found the videos that I found. And um, I think I ended up going off of like two or three different videos because again, I didn't, there was something like, certain specifics that weren't in one video so I just kind of um, tried to figure out between a couple of them what it was that was supposed to be the case and that's what I came up with. Uh, honestly I think I could have used more dye probably I did one third of the suggested combination of dyes to get the color that I wanted from um, Wilton's uh, this is the this is the color pack that I used um, color right um, concentrated food coloring, but I used three colors. One of them didn't need any other colors mixed in, and then the other two did. Um, I used only a third of the suggested drops that it, it was suggesting because they were talking about the concentration being put into two cups of icing, and I was using a cup of water each. Honestly, I could have probably used a little bit less water um, I used more of the pink. You guys know I used pink in this because of the last video, but um, I used more pink than the other two colors, but even still I didn't use all of it. Uh, so I probably could have done a little less water, but I think I probably could have done two thirds of the color um, combinations or drops of color versus one third. And I think it would have possibly come out a little bit better or more along the lines of how Rebecca's um, worked out when she was actually trying to work the color through the yarn. Um, and you'll see that in the video. And I think I even mentioned that. But I'm still thrilled with the way it came out. I wasn't sure how it would come out. And, you know, I was really worried that I was going to brown it out. Like I said, I, I, I went over that in the first video um, and I I get nervous before I start something because I want the finished whatever it is I'm working on to be right and so I will research everything I will do whatever it is that I need to do to make sure that whatever I'm going to work on I know enough that it's going to be maybe not perfect but at least will come out for the most part how I expected versus like a complete flop and uh, but yet I was still really nervous that it was going to be a complete flop and as it turns out it wasn't and I was actually very pleasantly surprised at the end and I will go over that after you actually see the video um but it was backbreaking. um I can't remember how long it actually took me from start to finish to paint all the yarn uh, I used a syringe. Um, I know some people, I've seen even, I think Rebecca use a paint brush, um, or in this case, the video that I followed, she used a syringe, or you can pour the, um, what, you know, the um, coloring over it. You know, there's different techniques that you can use, but I did go with the syringe. Um, and it did take a while, so on Sunday, I spent several hours standing between both Hanks 
and it was definitely yeah so i will have to figure out how to do it or work around that when it comes to doing this on a larger scale and i'm sure i'll figure something out and regardless I know how much I enjoyed it, so it is what it is, and I'll probably just deal with it. But, um, yeah, I really don't know what else to go into outside of letting you know that I did paint um, the yarn. And I think the colors, for the most part, came out the way I was wanting to. Now, the pink is a different pink than the pink that was in the dip dyed yarn. Um, and I think that's because there was a lot more concentration in the dip dye than there was in this one. And honestly, it worked out to be exactly perfect. I was able to do a third of the drops that I needed for the um, paint, hand painting. And then I had the drops that I was wanting to do for the dip dye. It was just weird how it worked out like that. The very first time I tried it, I had no idea how many. Now, the other thing is, is when you're actually pressing on the bottle to get the drips out or the drops out, I should say, Sometimes, if depending on the strength that you use, some of the drops can be larger than others. So I probably, there were probably several that instead of it actually counting as technically one drop, it probably was like two or three, but it still worked out perfectly. So I was like, wow, this is crazy. But it also didn't allow me to add, I could have on the other two colors, but... I really liked the color range that I was going for for the three of them. Although one of them was a, I guess it wasn't really a bit darker, but it it wasn't quite as, these were technically supposed to be considered neon colors. I don't know that I would say that. Well, I, with the pink and one of the colors, it, they are more neon. The other one seemed like it when I mixed it and blotted it on a piece of paper towel, but um, when it actually got on the yarn, it did, uh, and I am I still am not clear on what, like, the difference is between breaking and striking. I think it's the same, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm, I'm not sure if in this particular case it was that the color was breaking, and that's why I got the two different color variations in it. But um, I still think it kind of gave it an interesting look to it. And I know my mom was like, wow, because when I did the dip dye, she was like, well, you know, all those other um, yarns that you have, this, I, this is still something I'm going to be working on for a video to have in case I'm not able to put up a video one time on a Monday. I'm going over fiber bases. So this is all 100% Superwash Merino out of all the yarns that I've received on Mondays and Wednesdays videos. These two cubbies, which are stuffed, are both Monday and Wednesday videos, as is this one. Um, but anyway, that's why this kind of looks off a little bit. But um, anyway, sorry. So she's like, you know, all those other yarns that you have that have like multiple colors going through them and stuff like that, are you going to be able to do that someday? And I was like, well, I'm going to kind of sort of do that in this particular, you know, in the second um, Hank, but it's not going to be, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like multicolors throughout, you know, and with like speckling and stuff. Uh, so she, and then when she saw it, she was like, wow, she goes, this is really awesome. And I was like, thanks. And I didn't get a lot of color, like overage, like when I, with the, where the two colors um, combined, which was kind of nice. And so, like I said, I was really excited because, well, I'll, like I said, I'll go over that at the end. I don't know why I seem like this is like the first time I've ever done a video or anything. Um, but I'm going to let you guys go ahead and watch the actual process that I did. And I think for the most part, you were able to see everything. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm just so excited that I finally did two different, two different techniques and they came out surprisingly well. I guess not surprisingly well, but they came out really nice, I think. And so now, you know, I want to go ahead and test a couple other techniques. I don't know when exactly I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm hoping to be able to do it rather soon because I do want to get the practice in. And I do have a couple of people that um, are helping me behind the scenes once they see what it is that I'm doing and letting me know, you know, because they are very experienced in it because um, they have hand dyed um, or, you know, they have their own small businesses. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to getting those re responses from them and seeing how to fine tune things a little bit. But um, I'm just really excited to continue this because I really am loving it. And I told you guys my ultimate goal is to do this, um, I don't know necessarily full time, but to be able to do this, have my own... Um, um, have my own label and, you know, selling my own hand dyed yarns. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm wanting to be, of course, unique because you all know I like to do things a little bit differently than everybody else. Um, and of course I love colorful and bright and that type of thing. I obviously am not at the point where I could take an inspiration picture and recreate it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that takes some skill. Um, but I would like to be able to get to that point or see something just in general and that inspires me and go ahead and do it or just be, just let my creative juices flow. I've never necess I've never been the type where, I mean, I know the idea of what I like and I can create it, but it's like based on what I'll see that inspires me. And then it's like, okay, okay, I know I want that. And now let's go ahead. And I don't care about being eclectic or anything like that. I mean, I like things to complement each other, but, um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm just going to see how it goes. And I actually have a tie dye kit that I got at TJ Maxx. And I know, um, Rebecca with Chemnitz has a video. It's not the same brand, but it is a similar type of a thing. And so I'm really excited to see about working with that, whether I end up doing all whatever. I think there's like 18 or 20 something colors um, in, in the pack, whether or not I'm going to use them all at the same time or in one project or if I'm going to go ahead and spread it out. I don't know. I'm just going to kind of let things flow and see what happens. But at the same time, I really like to have it down pat so that I, I have it covered so that it'll actually come out looking good versus being like totally blah. It's a really hard struggle in my brain. And I know several of you said, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You guys are like that too. And it can really be hard to have a brain like that because it's like you want it to be perfect, but you've never done it before. So yeah. Um, but anyway, so enjoy the, um, process and I will see you guys at the end. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, guys. So welcome back. So this is my second attempt at dyeing yarn and today, or not today, but now I'm going to be hand painting a hank of yarn. And this is also the snow drift, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It is a hundred gram skein. It's fingering sock or fingering or sock weight. Now I have not only, well, I needed the plastic wrap or the saran wrap on here because I'm going to be painting it while laying on the saran wrap. Then I'm going to go ahead and wrap it and then put it in the microwave to steam set it. But to, in addition to that, I have a clear, um, shower curtain liner that is on top of this butcher block because I did not want to take the chance that I would mess up my mom's butcher block. That would not be fun. So, uh, I pre-soaked the hank of yarn in six cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar for a couple hours. And, um, I soaked it with the acid, um, which is needed, especially well, it, it, it needs to be present when hand painting yarn and because I'm not actually going to be pouring any yarns. Well, there's a couple of different techniques that you can do. So anyway, here is the yarn. It has been pre-soaked for a couple hours. I am going to just kind of straighten it out. Now, with the last hank that I dyed, um, I had asked the question that, or I couldn't remember if um, Rebecca with Chemnitz, which this is also a technique um, that I got from her, um, whether or not she cuts the strands that hold um, the hanks together, like this one right here, 
um, and there's one over here and there's one over here by the zip tie. Now, I can't remember if she does or doesn't um, cut them. I'm going to go ahead and keep it on there for now just so it doesn't end up getting too um, messy or anything. And I'm trying to straighten out the yarn so that it's as um, straight and untwisted as possible. Now, I have an opening here with the saran wrap because once this is painted, I'm going to be wrapping it this way, you know. So I also have two separate strand or um, pieces on this side to kind of bring over on here. So um, let's see. I just want to make sure. Yeah, there should be enough saran wrap. I don't know why it seems like it's not going to be wide enough, but I certainly hope it is. Now, Rebecca typically uses, you know, clear cups or cylinders so that you can see everything. Unfortunately, the couple of stores that we went to, I could not find them. Um, so I just went ahead and I got these hefty, um, you know, like solo uh, branded kind of sort of um, cups, and that's just going to have to do. So I guess I don't really need this twist or this um this uh zip tie because if anything it may just get in the way of the color getting through but you know what i'll i'll make sure to work it because i want to have it there so that i could grab it if need be now um you don't i don't think you have the entire hank on camera but for the most part you do i'm going to be doing three colors now i'm <laughs> this is a clear cut well i mean it's not clear because i've already like rinsed things in here but this is like my clear water so that i can um rinse the syringe uh in between going from color to color now i'm using three different colors uh now I am very happy, as, as I had mentioned in the other um, dip dye video, I happened to luck out that I didn't use what technically was called for, for this particular, what, I mean, for, to make the colors that it is that I wanted, and I'm happy I didn't use everything because then I wouldn't have had enough for the dip dye. Well, actually, I probably would have, but anyway. Uh, because this particular chart that they had for the colors was based on two cups of icing. Um, uh, I forget what kind of icing, but I'm using a cup of water. So I went ahead and I took um, the number of drops that they had per color and just um, did a third of them. So like for pink, it had 60 drops. I only did... Um, uh, 20 drops and then to get the green that I'm I was wanting it called for 30 yellow and three blue I did 10 yellow and one blue and for the purple it had 45 pink six blue and three red So I did 15 pink two blue and one red and it does come out to be um, Basically the colors that I was hoping they were going to be now. I don't know how it's gonna end up turning up on the uh, yarn, but I'm hoping it ends up looking pretty, but I'm going to go ahead and show you um, I'm going to mix it up again also because these have been up here for a couple few hours now, but um, I just, Now the purple is going to strike differently This is basically what the purple is going to be But it, you're going to notice that there's going to be a blue um, halo around it because it's striking differently to the fabric, or not the fabric, but to the paper towel. Uh, but I thought that was actually interesting when I did it earlier. And then the green is supposed to be like, not quite a neon green, but it's supposed to be a really pretty. Um, you all know I'm into bright and stuff, so I didn't want to mute these any more um, than they are. And then the pink is just basically going to be essentially the pink it's just straight pink and that's what i use to um dip dye the other one so these are the three colors i'm going to be using and i'm hoping it ends up looking good i'm going to do the green on one end the purple on the other end and do the pink in the center i don't know how evenly i'm going to do it originally i was going to kind of do it on an angle like do this way green and this way purple and then the pink in the center but then I thought about it if I actually turned it around it would just be the same thing doing the ends and doing the center right so 
I'm just going to leave it where I'm doing the ends and then uh, do the center with pink. And I'm thinking I'll probably do the pink like this. Now in the video that Rebecca did, um, she did, I believe it was either a quarter or a half a cup of water and then diluted the food coloring, but she also had six colors. I'm doing three colors. So I did a full cup of water because I wanted to make sure that I had enough so that I could get the saturation I was looking for and that I wasn't, I wasn't having any issues with there being too many um, white, you know, sections on there, um, which when I go to do the, you know, I'm going to be basically just pushing in the color to get it to the other side. Um, but then of course I'll check and make sure that there, you know, more dye isn't needed. Now, I, I think I may have over squished the liquid out. I don't think so. But um, I did squeeze as much of the pre-soak out of here, which did have the acid in it, which you do need to have the acid. But of course, since I wasn't actually doing it into the dyes, I did it into the water like she suggested. Um, and now with this is food coloring, so it is food safe. So you don't need to wear gloves. I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to dye my fingers any more than I already did trying to open the little containers. Uh, yeah, you should see my finger, these three fingers right here. Um, I'm hoping the sun isn't um, throwing things off, but it'll be setting soon, so um, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, there are a couple of different techniques to be able to actually paint the yarn. I've seen some people actually use a paint brush to paint the yarn, um, or you can actually pour water, you know, pour the liquid over or on it. Um, I'm going to use a syringe, not any particular amount. I'm just going to use it until I feel there's enough yarn or enough dye and then go from there. But um, that's the way I'm deciding to do this. Um, I am going to need a microwave safe plate, which I have. I don't know if it's really big enough, but it's not. I also only have a so big microwave, right? So hopefully I'll be able to get it on there without having to move around the yarn too much so that the dyes don't overlap much at all, if at all. Uh, I already told you about the plastic wrap and the shower curtain that I'm using um, and the fact that I have a clean um, glass of water. Well, I mean, it's not fully clean right now, but, and then you just want to make sure that you have enough, the saran wrap under it enough so that you can go ahead and um, uh, fold it over and basically cover it up completely so that no so that you can trap in as much heat when you microwave it which is going to steam set it uh all right so you want to make sure to clean the syringes in between the colors so that you don't have on um, the colors you know mixing and i'm going to wipe my gloves along the way so that i'm not you know because i'm going to be kneading it you know like kind of kneading it in i'm going to wipe my gloves before i switch colors and then yeah after that, we'll go on to the rest of it. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know if I should go ahead and start with the pink and just do it in the center. I'm thinking I'm, I'm probably going to do like that kind of a section. So here we go. This is the first time I've already dyed my first hank of yarn. This is still technically dying, so it's not my first hank of yarn, but it's my first hand painting of a hank of yarn. Uh, so let's go and see what happens. I hope this is, you know what, I think this is not going to be, um, I don't know that there's going to be enough saturation of color, but that's okay. Uh, I could have used less um, uh, water, but we are going to go from here. I'm going to leave a little bit of white on the edges so that I still have... Um, Um, room to be able to um, work it in. Now I'm going to have to use quite a bit more. I don't know how she had enough to actually work it in. When she worked it in, I mean, it was working in. This isn't, I mean, it's like there's not even enough, so I'm going to have to put some extra in. And if this ends up being a speckled hank, then that's what it is. Um, but it seems like it's almost, 
mean, I know it's not like setting in, but there's like more of the pre-soak in here moving around than there is actually the pink. It's like the pink is basically just setting as soon as I put it on. That is craziness because that was nothing like that on yeah see I mean it's not there's like nothing in there to come through over here so we're going to play this by ear I'm going to do whatever I can do here with the amount of um dye that I have and uh see what happens I mean This is my first time with you guys. It almost is going to look like tie-dye if it doesn't work itself in. Now, I know she said that one of the ways to be able to, um, to get it where you're able to work it in more is to have more of the um, pre-soak, like not to get out as much pre-soak. But I actually didn't... Um, What's the word? Um, I didn't squeeze out as much as I thought I did because there's plenty in here. So it's almost like it's striking right away. This is fascinating and it's really interesting because it almost looks like the fibers are, hmm, I don't know. Look at all this. This is, this is very interesting, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting in the pink, and then I'll be back to go ahead and do the next color, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I've done the pink, and it looks like this may be shorter than that, but here it looks about the same size. Now, I find it interesting because this, to me, looks like it has been discolored. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go and do the next color, which I think I'm going to go ahead and do with green and I'm going to start over here. You may not see all of it, but I do still have a bit of pink. So if I need to close in the gap a little bit, or if I want to, um, make the saturation a little bit better, I will, uh, I just find it interesting. I don't know what exactly I did differently than Rebecca when it came to um, being able to actually work it in and actually and have it move and, and fill in you know like I had to p continue to put in more dye in order for uh, it to work you know what I mean so I'm not quite sure what it is I did differently it may have need honestly it may have needed all of that added, um, you know, not just a third of the dye. I may have needed the full amount that it suggested, which had I had more pink, that wouldn't have been a problem, but I didn't. So that is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do green um, over here. And then we'll go from there and see what happens, I guess. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to... And since I should have enough of it, um, clearly, that I'll try to saturate it as much as I can so that I'm, because I wasn't really looking to do a speckle, but if that's what ends up happening, then that's what ends up happening. Uh, whatever was meant to be, I suppose, is what was meant to be, but... I won't bore you with this for long. I just want you to be able to see uh, the color, at least um, to start. And I'm going to continue to play to see how much more I need of either one of them, because I'm going to have to close up this gap here. Um, but I don't think there's going to be a problem with it overlapping, because clearly there's not really enough dye in here and plus it seems to be taking like striking right away 
because there's absolutely no movement. One, once I try to move it or try to like work it in, there's nothing that I can do to have it actually transferred to another strand of yarn. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the green and then I'll come back with the purple and then we'll see what we're going to do with the rest of the white. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have, for the most part, I think all the green I want, but I may actually extend the pink a little and the green a little and do the same with the purple, but we'll see as soon as I get to the purple. Uh, but what, what I find interesting is with the green, I had a little bit more leeway with actually working it in and it actually um, transferring to other uh, strands that didn't have yarn or dye. Whereas with the pink, there was no... That, that just did not work. So I find that really interesting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch to the purple now and see where that goes. And I have this piece of paper towel there so I can set the um, uh, syringe down when needed. Oh, this is a beautiful purple. I hope that the purple works like the green does as far as, you know, I'm going to move the purple over here. Less chance of me um, <laughs> knocking it over or something. Um, and you know what? The blue, there's going to be some blue in here because blue is already striking in here. Interesting. So... We'll see how uh, that works out, but the blue is definitely coming out over here that I can see. I don't know if you guys can see it, and I know I'm not set up necessarily with the best setup to be able to uh, move the camera for you to be able to see everything that's going on, but I definitely am getting the blue striking. See, there's like blue in there that's kind of awesome we'll see what ends up happening once it's actually dried but wow it looks <laughs> it almost looks like um not necessarily speckled but definitely there's um it's an interesting pattern of blue i love this purple though and the way i made this purple with the one cup of water um, I did 15 pink, two blue, and one red of the Wilton's color. I forget what it's called. I'll have to look at it again. But, um, now the purple is not like the green where, see, do you see this? I don't know if you can see this blue that's in here. When I do this, the blue comes out, but it doesn't actually transfer any purple to any of the white, you know, to the other side that hasn't um, been worked in. And there's quite a bit, but you can see all this blue that's in there. So this one is going to be very interesting to see how it works up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip it. I'm sure you can see all that blue. You see that? So it's going to definitely be interesting to see how this purple side comes out. So I will be back once I finish the purple and then we'll decide. I may actually close in the greens to the pink. I don't know. We'll end the purple to the pink. We'll see, but I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I decided to close in the pink a little bit more. Um, there is a little bit of transfer between the pink and the green. You still see a lot of blue in the purple. Um, I'm going to close this part up with the purple, but I figured I would do that with you guys. Um, and I was going to wait until I got as close as I wanted to be. Now with the pink, it's funny. Now I was having less issue with the pink. I was able to go ahead and put the pink and actually... Um, you know, do this and knead it in and transfer it. Uh, whereas before, you guys saw, that just wasn't happening. So I it, I find it interesting. Uh, the blue is still... Crap. Um, breaking. 
so you could see that right over there it's breaking through so it, it's it's gonna be interesting to see what the purple actually looks like after it's heat set and it dries see how much blue actually comes out but there is a lot of blue in the purple um so you know i was really i was and i was originally wanting it you know to be as blue, as purple as you know purple not blue but forgetting that that's what happens um you know i'm totally okay to see what ends up happening now i can end up going over the blue sections with the purple and it will sometimes fill in um i'm going to put a little bit more pink over here but otherwise i think the purple is pretty i think the coverage over here is pretty good again there's a lot more blue you know what i'm going to do a little bit more there and then this will be my very first attempt at hand dyeing yarn now i will say that it's killing my back actually even doing the dip dye because standing evidently i haven't done a lot of standing as of late so now i know standing ain't good <laughs> sorry isn't good but uh is what it is i suppose um but you do what you do for your art or craft um but this i ha i definitely found this very fascinating especially with the purple and i so very can't wait till it it uh steam sets in the microwave and um once it steam sets and cools off and where i can you know try rinsing it and seeing hopefully there won't be you know much uh bleeding if any I mean that would be ideal is none but uh i guess we'll see i think i got oh yeah i was gonna do a little bit more pink there and then i think we're gonna be done with this and you know we'll see we'll see we'll see i mean i used the most of pink but then again i had almost double the pink because i did pink on both sides why because pink is one of my favorite color well blue is my absolute favorite color and pink and purple are right there but this pink is to die for pink i mean seriously people this is like killer pink all right so i think we got it now there is quite a oops i just oversaturated i mean I, oh well there's gonna be a little bit of overage there but there is quite a bit of liquid in here because um it really took a lot so clearly i could have increased the dye um instead of doing a third i could have probably done two thirds had i had enough pink and that probably would have helped me from having to use so much so there's a lot i mean i could probably squeeze this out and have a ton of liquid um but i'm gonna go ahead and oh. This can actually go over here for now um i'm gonna go ahead and wipe down any excess um liquid that i kind of see on the saran wrap and then i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it and after that i'm gonna put on a microwave safe plate put it in the microwave for um from the videos that i watched of hers it's um it seems like six minutes is on high is pretty much the winning number but you do it in two minute increments and you want to cover it as much as you can so there's not any opening so that it actually steams it and after two minutes you open it after two minutes it's probably not going to be hissing or steaming that much but then you let it kind of cool off a little and then you do the next two minutes and then you check it again should be hot to the touch at the very least then you let it cool just a little bit so that it's manageable to touch it and then you do another two minutes it may not be hissing but it should be at that point um steam set enough so i'm gonna do this 
with you guys. And uh, start going in from um, the outside. I have no idea if I'm doing it right, if I'm not doing it right. That's my first time. But now you also want to try to be careful so that you're not messing with it too, too much because you're also not wanting the colors to bleed into each other as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, you're wanting to make sure that it's... Um, as sealed as it can be. See, like right here, it just opened up. So, want to make sure it's as. What's going on here? Why are you being difficult? I'm kind of. I, I was trying to follow the way she did it. I don't remember her rolling it, but I can't get this part to really wrap without it. Um, so we'll see what happens. I could be totally messing this up right now and I'm going to regret it later or I'm doing it just the way I'm supposed to be doing it. Please feel free to leave comments. Constructive criticism is accepted. Uh, because i got to learn how to do it, right? Um, I hope, I mean, from what I can see, I don't see anything open. So, here's hoping it's all okay. And then you want to take your microwave safe dish, which this is food safe, so... That's why I'm not really um, that concerned with um, son of a gun. This green does not want to stay sealed up, like for anything. Um, that's why I'm not as concerned with using a plate I actually eat off of. Um, this is probably the only thing, see that's open right there. Why is this being so difficult here? Hopefully I just sealed it enough. Can't quite tell if there's anything else open. Oh my gosh, this whole purple section is open. Alright, I think I got it now. I hope. My back is about to break. Um, the pink seems to be a-okay for the most part. And I guess we'll see what happens when I take it out. If it doesn't, if it all washes out. Then it wasn't sealed in properly. If it doesn't wash out, then we're a-okay. So I think we're okay here. I'm also being a little extra careful because this is the first time I've ever done this. And I really would rather not mess it up after spending all this time getting this dye on here. Alright guys, so this is why... Oh, you guys weren't even seeing most of that. <laughs> Sorry. But most... You see... Uh, that's why I had gloves on. You guys want to see what I did trying to open the containers? That. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in for two minutes. Keep in mind, my microwave is smaller than yours as far as going high temperature, so I don't know what the temperature is supposed to be like. I don't know, just on high. I know, but my high is different than your high, I think. Remember, this is a smaller... Oh. Yeah, well, mine is older, so I'm hoping yours okay. is maybe, maybe your newer <laughs> overdoes my <laughs> older. I somehow I don't think that's how it works. I don't think works. that's how it works either, but, <laughs> but it you sounds know, good. <laughs> sounds good. All right, guys, so I have it in for the first two minutes. We will see 
Well, we will see when it comes out. Well, I, after the first two minutes, I'm going to check it. Then I'm going to let it cool off a for a few seconds until I can put something on the bottom because the plate's going to be hot. Oh yeah, um, so I can safely, um, I mean, touch it without like burning myself. Then I'll put it in for another two minutes, see how it goes, and then let it cool off a little bit, which that to me is counterintuitive, but she said it like three different times on two different videos. So I guess there's a, there's a method to the madness. Um, and then I'll put it in for the third time, and then I'll pull it out. Uh, let me read my notes. Uh, oh yeah, you don't want to burn or scorch the yarn. That's why you want to do it in two minute increments and make sure it's not like overly going nuts. So, um, and, but yeah, you want to cool, let it cool off. Do six minutes total hissing, like cool. Okay, I already went over that. Let's sit while wrapped till it's cool to touch, then carefully unwrap and wash it. Okay, so after it's done, after that last six minutes and we're done with the heating, the steam setting of it, um, I'm going to let it sit until it's cool to the touch, and then I'm going to unwrap it, and that's when um, we'll go ahead and wash it, which probably will be a couple hours. So um, I will come back once I pull it out of the microwave for the last time and, and while it sits to cool until it's cool. Did that make sense? <laughs> Can you tell I'm a little tired? All right, so I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. See you soon. Bye. Okay, so... Here's my steamed colorful sausage. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm hoping, beyond hope, I, I'm, I'm, con I'm fairly confident I didn't scorch it or burn it. I did do a full six minutes at two minute intervals, letting it cool down just slightly in between. It never got to a point that it was hissing um, or you know anything like that to signify a steam, but Okay, it's been out here for like a minute or two, but having kept my hand on there for that length of time, seriously, um, I wouldn't be able to keep my hand on there for any length of time. So I'm hoping, beyond hope, that I wrapped it properly, that it's sealed in nicely, where I don't have any issues with any parts not being covered, and that it, it, that it steamed itself. So I guess we will see. I have to let this completely cool. Um, actually, could I have my notepad that's under there? Because um, I forgot to look at anything. <laughs> but let's see. So um, yeah, let's sit while wrapped till it's cool to touch, then carefully unwrap and wash it. So once it's cool to touch, where I can actually do this without burning myself. Um, so when it's basically cooled off, completely is from um that's how you do it with other yarns so i what i may do is once it's cool to the touch on top i may flip it and then let the bottom cool off then i'll go ahead and unwrap it and wash it we will do that together it's a stainless steel bowl so i don't know if it's going to be really obvious any um if there's a lot of runoff but we'll see what happens um and it says when hand painting um when hand painting, there is a higher chance of excess yarn, oh, sorry, color that will rinse out. Uh, when you add soap, often more dye comes out, so rinse till water runs clear. I forgot about that. Uh, she did say that. So when you hand paint, dye, uh, hand paint yarn versus like drip, dip dyeing it or, you know, other methods, when you hand paint it like this, more color tends to run off. So I guess I won't totally freak out if like a ton of color is coming off. I will if it gets like pastel. That's going to really bother me because I was really looking for, you know, bright, you know me. This purple actually was supposed to be more violet, more closer to not quite the blue, but like the blue purple hue is what this was supposed to be. Not quite as this kind of deep purple, but that's okay. Um, I love the green, I love the pink. So hopefully they don't turn into pastel. I'm able to, I steam set it enough that I was able to, you know, um, yeah, see, I mean, I still can't touch it for very long without it really hurting. But anyway, so I will come back once this is cooled off top and bottom and we will unwrap it together and then we will go ahead and rinse it. Um, 
I may have to let it cool overnight because I don't know how long it's going to take. It's already 8.30 p.m. and um, I really don't necessarily want to be up all night. But I'm probably going to be because I'm so excited about this. So who knows? I'll let you know what time it is that we do it. So I will be back shortly. If you guys that hand dye yarn and hand paint yarn see that I did something totally off the wall and completely missed something that Rebecca may have said, or if you guys have a different tip because you've been doing it and it works, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Um, I, I'm really open to new ideas and, you know, and going from there. So far, I'm happy there wasn't a ton of color bleeding, so that was a good thing, not more than I myself did. So yay for that. But anyway, I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys end up liking the finished project. Again, even if this cools enough tonight for me to rinse it tonight, I'll use the salad spinner to dry it. I'll show you the, what it looks like damp, but then I'm going to have to hang it up to dry and that's going to take a couple days. So I'll show you the finished product once it's dry on the next Getting to Know You. So I hope you guys have a great day. Or actually, I'll see you guys in a little bit at the next step, which is rinsing it, right? All right, so I'll, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. Okay, so we are back. It is Monday morning now. And we're going to go ahead and rinse off the second um, hank of yarn that I dyed. This hank of yarn was the hand-painted one. And remember what I let you know, um, Rebecca with Chemnitz said that hand-painted yarns will have a higher probability of having um dye runoff and or bleeding than like the dip dye yarns or low or high um immersion you know other more than other techniques so i'm hoping that won't be the case and there's going to be absolutely no bleeding <laughs> um plus this did sit overnight because i did fall asleep last night and so um yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night at one point and thought about, you know, going to do this, but um, I was just like half asleep, like a zombie. So I was like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't do that. I'm also hoping, I'm not seeing a lot of color transfer between the colors. Here, there's a little bit, but that could have even been from what I did myself. Here's a little bit also, so I'm hoping when we take this out and rinse it, there won't be too much more. My main hope is even if there was some even if there is going to be some bleeding that it's still going to stay as vibrant as it is that it's not going to have it that it's not going to turn pastel -y. um i'm hoping it stays as concentrated as this is but i guess we shall see um i forgot to bring some gloves with me so i'm going to go ahead and get some gloves because with this um yes i know it's color safe or I mean food safe but I'd rather yeah I mean this I was already able to rinse off quite a bit quite a bit but I'd rather not have any more if well there may not even that it may not even happen but um, I'm gonna go get the gloves just in case so I'll be right back okay so let's go ahead and start unwrapping this um, Again, I'm hoping that it was wrapped. Oh, look at this. I'm hoping I wrapped it well enough that it, you know, it did actually seal in the heat when we um, steamed it. But look at that. There was a little spot of pink there. But um, I actually think that happened right from the beginning um, when I was using the... Um, the syringe and I dripped up some pink down now now that I have it this way one thing I will say though and I don't know if it's I this yarn is from Nomad and um, I you know they were they had a they have a fantastic special during April where it's up to 50% off on some yarns and that's why I went ahead and and I heard about them from um, Rebecca and remember if you're wanting to find out the reasons why behind the science of why certain colors strike faster that type of thing please don't listen to what I'm saying I'm like I told you guys in the first 
with the dip dye yarn. I extrapolated a lot of information from multiple of her videos, but Rebecca is the one who has the know-how and knows the actual science behind everything. So please um, go follow, go check out her channel and follow her because she can give you specific reasons as to why certain colors strike faster than others. I mean, she has a PhD in like, I think it's like chemical pharmacology or by, I don't know, don't, don't quote me. I mean, but she, she's incredibly intelligent and very knowledgeable when it comes to yarn and colors and stuff. Now, see, this is already not quite as vibrant as it was yesterday. It was way deeper purple, I thought. But do you see the blues in here? Now, actually, if I remember correctly, the purple was actually supposed to look a little bit more like the blues than the darker purple, but it was supposed to be considered neon according to their um, verbiage on the packaging. But there is a little bit of color transfer between the two, but not much. Um, there is a little bit of white or, you know, a little bit lighter coloring. I was hoping I got the concentrate, you know, that I got enough concentration and didn't have all of the, you know, whitish areas. But I think overall for my first time, it's not too bad. Um, here there is some color transfer between the two. But, um, I mean, that's not surprising, especially since I was trying to get, you know, the pink as close to the green as possible. Now, this green, I think, is beautiful. Now, that kind of upsets me. Not upsets me like I'm mad, but that kind of, I should say, disappoints me because that's the only place that I see that there was different color. But that's okay. But this green, I love. I think it's a fabulous colored green. Um, there is a lot of liquid in here, so... Let's go ahead and um, get this into the rinse and see what happens. Now, if you see on this plate, there's, I don't see any color there, but we haven't used soap yet. So that oftentimes brings out some color. So let's go ahead. This is just cold water. I mean, okay, it's Florida. So even when we run our cold tap, it's not cold, but um, it's cool-ish water. Uh, so let's see, and then I'll go ahead and put some soap in. But look at that. It's basically clear. It is basically clear. I don't think I see any kind of color in there. Now, I didn't do the soap yet, but I know in the video that I had watched of her, she used a lot of darker colors, though. Um, there, right from the initial rinse, it was already darker. But let's see what happens once we put some soap in here. And here's praying that it's not anything, um, I don't know if I used enough soap, but if I feel I didn't, I'll do it again. Um, now one thing, I do have a question for those of you that dye yarn, and I don't know if I'll, if... Macy with Mace of Skeins will happen to watch this or not. I know she's watched a couple of my videos, but, um, and I get it from what she said when she does her, um, uh, when she's using acid dyes and she's wearing her respirator mask and she's always looking down how her neck and back kill her. Yeah, my back, I, it's like I did hours of gardening or something. It's horrible, but, um, it is what it is and I, I don't mind because I'm super excited about this, but... My question for you dyers, how is it that you, like, this looks to me like a hot mess. Like, how is this ever going to get wound in any way, shape, or form um, with it looking like it's all, um, you know, twisted up and stuff? Look at that. There's, like, no color bleeding. Oh, my gosh, I am so freaking excited. You have no idea. I was really afraid that this was going to turn into a pastel. I mean, it is lighter. This is nowhere near the hot, like the really hot pink that it was in um, the dip dye. But it's still nice and vibrant. So I am so excited about that. But anyway, let me know what it is that you guys do to make it not be a total hot mess when you're rinsing and everything else. I mean, I still have the original ties on there. You know how Hanks come with the original tie. I still have that on there. Plus, I've got the um, zip tie. But let me know 
how it is that you do it so that it actually doesn't end up looking like it's going to be knotted and not able to spin. Um, I don't know if I did something wrong or different or whatever, but um, just let me know. And I'm going to do the, run it off like this one more time and see what happens. I really don't think I see any kind of color. There could be a slight little baby tiny tinge of pink, but I really don't think there is. So I am really, really way super excited about that. Now, it does actually look to me like the pink does seem a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, but not much. Um, there, you know, there are some white areas, but it's very, very light. So I think I did a fairly good job when it came to making sure I got as much um, color throughout. Now, as far as the purple, though, you see, there is a lot. Do you see all that blue? ish honestly it's almost like a violet uh, more than blue but it's definitely blue in there the only thing that kind of bugs me is the vibrancy isn't or the the saturation isn't there um it's still nice and bright but this the the um vibrancy isn't there it's not like or the concentration maybe that's the right word like i like it to be like mm, that's the color, you know, not where it's, you know, not, there's so nothing wrong with this, but more like the green with the green. It's like, this is green. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't know, but I am so super thrilled that there was no color, um, uh, no bleeding to the color. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it a couple more. Guys, I'm so sorry. I have no idea where my video cut off, um, but I'm going to watch it in a second. But just in case, I did make sure to let you know to go to see Rebecca Chemnitz um, for any you know specifics of anything. And I am going to be looking at a couple of her videos so that I can use a tie-dye kit that I got from TJ Maxx because she did one similar to that. Not the same kit, but she did do one with the pre um like the the colors that were already like mixed and everything um and i'll probably i think i have one more of the 7525 um from nomad if not i have a 7030 on merino uh nylon blend which is probably what i'll use instead of before i jump into using my merino blends with the cashmere and, and silk and that kind of stuff or alpaca but I seriously don't see any kind of bleeding in here. Uh, I don't know if I used enough soap. I thought I did, but um, I'm going to rinse this a couple more times, and then I'm going to go ahead and ha I I'll use the spin uh, salad spinner and show it to you damp, and then I'll show you the finished product once it's completely dry, which probably won't be until the next getting to know you because um, the pink one is still fairly damp and it's been hanging up since la like in the wee hours of this morning um so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, i may I'm, I'm gonna make sure to do a wrap up like video at the end so that we can kind of talk about stuff but anyway let me know what you thought of the technique and and or if you do something different or how yours comes out if you do do it different or if you do it the same how you know how does it compare Whatever, I'd love to hear it. But I will see you guys back in the, after I spin dry it. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Um, I put it through the spin dryer. There was actually quite a bit of water. Let's see. Um, not a ton, but there was definitely more than what I was able to get out of it. <laughs> anyway, so this is it damp. Um, I'm really hoping that it keeps the vibrancy of the green and that the pink um you know because once it dries it it that's when you tell the true color so i'm hoping that the vibrancy of all of this is still there um again with the purple i do wish that i got like a full purple or like got this lavender that's what i was going for kind of um well yeah uh but anyway which the bl the bluer part of it that is actually closer to my glove but i love it i think it came out great especially as my first attempt 
Um, there was acid in the pre-soak and it had soaked for a couple hours. So, you know, because it was needed, except it wasn't something that was actually getting used at during the painting process. But I am happy. Um, I think it looks great for my first time. And, you know, with practice um, comes a little bit more talent, right? <laughs> so I have a lot more practicing to do. Um, having hand painted this, it did take quite a while. Um, I think next time I'm going to make sure I have enough. Well, I also did the other pink, so that took up. Otherwise, I would have had enough of the pink. I think ha I think ideally with the cup of water that I used, I should, I would have next time if I try it, I might do um, two thirds of the suggested color to get the colorway that they said these would be. Um, I only used a quarter of the dye because I didn't have enough of the pink, but um, I may do two thirds and see if there was a bit more color concentration in there, which would have possibly allowed me to massage the um, dye into it and actually allowing it to, tr you know, fully absorb into all the strands versus having it, you know, basically just put it on there and and it was done that's you guys saw that when I originally did the pink now with the green I didn't have that so much I was able to massage it into the other strands and the purple the same thing not a ton but definitely more but then when I went back to the pink and I put more pink on I did notice it was allowing me to do it a little bit more not a lot but a little bit more so anyway, um I will end up showing you the finished pod the fin Miley the finished yarn um probably on the next uh, well it should be dry miley enough um it should be dry enough by getting or it should be dry by getting to know you especially if getting to know you doesn't get posted until sunday again <laughs> but anyway i'll show you the finished um dried yarn of this one as well as the dip dyed one so i'm gonna have to come up with some color names uh for these now too so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will do like a little um ending video to kind of go over everything so yep I'll, I'll see you guys soon hope you enjoyed it bye okay so what'd you think i you all know of course i like bright and colorful and i love pink and green together i love pink and purple together i like um, purple and green together and this way I was like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and use all three of course I did more pink because because I could have done it green pink purple versus having the two pinks on the side and the green and the purple on the ends but I was like no nope, I just this was what inspired me so I was like you know what this is just what I'm gonna do and we're gonna go from there now I have to say and I went over this on my um, live last week and one of the things that Rebecca said, and I had heard it from other people that dye yarn also, that with hand painted dyeing, that technique tends to have the most like bleeding in the rinse and wash at the end. And so I was really nervous because there have been several times where I've watched where I, you know, somebody dyeing their yarn and they went to go wash it and there was a good amount of bleeding from hand painted yarn, good amount of bleeding. And the colors went from being really like dark and, and just, or, or whatever, just vibrant and, and concentrated to being not pastel-y, but like a lot lighter and not quite as intense. And not that I don't think it's beautiful, it's still beautiful, but it, I'm like, oh man, I really, really, really hope that doesn't happen here. I really want the vibrancy, I want the concentration, I want, I want this color. This is the color I want. I don't want it to be pastel because this would, in those three colors, it ultimately would have been pastel. And so I was really nervous that when I went to go rinse it, it was going to bleed and it was going to you know, wash out a lot of the color and it was going to end up drying pastel. And when I peeled away the saran wrap and then put it into the rinse water, there was nothing. And then I added the soap and still nothing. I was like, 
you have no idea how much, I mean, I don't know that I actually reacted in the video as much as I internally was like jumping for joy. Like I was so ecstatic. It was like ridiculous. I'm like, there is not one iota of color in this water. Oh my gosh. How the heck did I do this? Because every single video I've watched where somebody hand painted their yarn, there was at least a little runoff, maybe not bleeding, but there was a little color runoff and here it wasn't. I was so grateful. Um, I was like, thank you God that this didn't do this. And I was just so excited. So I don't know if it's because, I don't know if I, because I did the full six minutes in the microwave and, and or if it was I, maybe didn't let it cool down as much as I thought Rebecca meant for it to be before I did the next two minutes, or if it was the fact that I fell asleep and it sat in the saran wrap overnight. I don't know. I, I have no idea why it happened, but I am so grateful that it did. Now it could be because I didn't have a lot of dye in that one cup of water for each color. It could be that reason, but whatever it is that happened, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll keep testing it and see what happens because I want to use more dye next time. Um, and I'll see what happens, but I was ecstatic and I was like, yes, this is awesome. And so then the next day or no, that morning I, um, the yarn was really damp because I had only put it through the salad spinner and I went ahead and I showed my mom and she was like, wow, she goes, this actually looks almost like basically the same. And I said, yeah, because it's still damp. Let's wait until it dries. And so after she got home from work, it wasn't dry by any means, but it was definitely drier than, um, it had been in the morning. And so I brought it over to her and she's like, well, it's still looking really good. And I was like, I know I'm so excited. And I think it's, I think it has kept its color, um, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. I still have the zip tie on here because I'm hoping you guys will help me. Those of you that are experienced in this as to how to keep the Hank looking like it's not a hot mess. This one is a lot better than the pink one. The pink one looks like it's totally tangled, even though it's not because it still has the original ties on it and the zip tie, but it, seems like it's going to be a hot mess when it go when it comes to actually winding it uh so i would love to get your opinion your thoughts on that those of you that are experienced in this um also i i did pretty decent as far as um um hanking this except it's very loose i need to figure out how to do it where you all do it all nice and tight and then hank it and it looks all pretty and you know whatever i need to practice that like a lot so if anybody has any tips or ideas or suggestions, or you can do a little video clip and send it to me on Messenger or, or whatever the case is of email, I would love it because, yeah, I need some help. But without further ado, here it is. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, now, I think it's awesome. There's the zip tie. I think it looks great. I mean, some people may not be into these colors, but, um, there, the, the one thing that kind of bugged me is right here, my, my, um, syringe dripped and I didn't realize it. And so it spotted up the green right here, but the green has the most, I think, saturation and color. There are a couple of strands that have, that are a little bit lighter, like right here. I don't know if you can see that it's a, uh, it's a little bit lighter, but for the most part, the green is you know pretty saturated and it's a beautifully bright color and like I said as far as the over overlapping colors I think I did pretty good at keeping it green and keeping it pink um, there is a little bit of lighter like not quite white but there is lighter sections in there but for the most part I, I think I did pretty well as far as not having it overlap too much and discolor same thing on this side um although i am noticing now that the strands have kind of moved a little bit that like the pink has moved down but as far as overlapping i don't think it was too bad um as far as the pink is concerned i love this pink i think it is beautiful and bright there you can see the white in it a little bit 
like I wasn't fully able to see the right in through here I wasn't able to fully concentrate the color on there again I think it's because I needed more dye I didn't have it in the pink um, specifically but this is the other side of pink but I think I still did a great job and I kind of like it now typically I don't like it not that I don't like it it's not my thing when there is where every strand doesn't have full color uh, unless it's intentionally designed that way, but it, 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 uh, if it was something where it actually washed out versus it was intended that way, um, that's just typically not my thing, but I kind of like it. And I don't want to say it's like a tie dye effect because that's not right, but I still love the brightness of this pink. Now, I don't know that I would consider it neon. The green is more neon. This is definitely bright. I don't know about neon. The purple though, that's where, um, and, I, and I think I was actually pretty accurate in the measurements of the, cause I was just eyeballing it. I didn't measure to see how, how long to make the purple, how long to make the green. It just happened to work out that it's essentially the same length. I mean, I was like, wow, I couldn't believe that. But again, as far as cover, a uh, color overlapping, I think I did a pretty decent job with not having it overlap too much. And I guess with hand painting, it's a lot easier to do that versus like if you did it in a low immersion, low or high immersion um, technique. But when, as you saw in the video, when I when I put when I applied the um, dye with the uh, syringe, the blue struck a lot faster and then the purple kind of came in. Now I was able to go over it a lot more and more purple was able to come in to the picture. But on here, there is a lot more color variation on, on it. Obviously you can see that. But um, now honestly, on the I'll show you the um, little um, like color thing that they have on here um the purple i was going for this green this pink and this purple now i haven't even done this myself i think the pink is pretty spot on i think the green is pretty spot on the purple the sections that i keep saying blue is kind of the color it was supposed to be if you see that it's close. Those colors are close. And I don't think this is neon by any means personally, but the lighter sections that I keep saying the blue is closer to what this was supposed to be than the actual purple is. You see what I'm saying? So it's interesting to me because there was, even when I did it, when I just put it on, it didn't just stay the lighter purple. Parts were lighter purple, parts were darker purple, and that's exactly what happened on the paper paper towel when I when I mixed it and I and I swatched it on the paper towel. It was purple in the center, and then it went to the blue or the light purple around. And I thought that's because of the material of the of the paper towel, but then it did it on the yarn. So honestly, it should have all been this, you know, the lighter color than the other purple. But I think it would have, I don't know that it would have taken away from, actually it probably would have been prettier that way, having it the lighter purple in this combination than the darker purple. But I still, I do like the way this came out, although I would have preferred it being a solid color. I do like that, um, I do like it, I, I do. Now in the purple, oh, I mean, wait, no, cause the purple was a mix of the, um, yeah, the pink, the red and the blue. So in the red, you've got the red three and the, um, the red three and the red 40, which red three strikes faster. And then red 40 is next. And then in the blue, yeah, um, blue one is in there. Um, and then 
of course the pink has red three as well so there was like double the red three and not quite because the con the concentration was different and that was the other thing i forgot i needed 15 drops of pink for the purple and i used um 30 uh, i'm sorry 20 drops for the pink for the pink so again it just all worked out to be the perfect amount that i needed to do both hanks and i was really excited about that but anyway so I think this came out, this came out the way I wanted it to come out. And I'm ha I am so thrilled that the vibrancy is still there, that the color saturation is what I wanted it to be, especially in the green. The pink does have some variation in it, and of course the purple has the most variation. But I think it came out great. I would love to know what you guys think as far as the color overlap when it comes to where the colors um uh come together what your opinion is as to how i did on that but again any tips tricks whatever the case is um would be is very very much appreciated and um especially from those of you that have you know that dye yarn here we go again my little hank just totally got messed up um, okay, well, it kind of got better, but yeah, all these little strands and stuff. So that's a tip I would love is how to hang it up properly so that it doesn't look like all a hot mess. Because that's not good. You don't want your hanks to look like a hot mess. You want them to look all pretty and stuff, right? I mean, come on. So anyway, let me know what you think. This video, I think, got a lot longer than I anticipated or planned for it to be. But I am so excited that it came out the way it came out you all know i mean i know catherine you're totally not going to be surprised at the colors that i used and that i did it bright but um i look forward to hearing what you guys have to say i apologize that there's not a local yarn shop tour today but i got i let you guys know last week that there wasn't going to be one um and i'm hoping that i'll be able to either get out there this wednesday or saturday to those two shops at the very least so that we have two more weeks of local yarn shops and then in that time frame maybe be able to save enough to be able to do the weekend trip that we need to get the other three which one of them isn't actually a local yarn shop but it is fiber arts related and it is not a dye studio but i think it's going to be fascinating and then the rest of it will have to be you know we're gonna have to play, play, play it by ear but i am going to also go through the different fibers and compare like these are all 100 percent superwash merino and there are many differences in a lot of them between single ply two ply you know four ply softnesses all kinds of stuff but that's going to be something that i'll be able to fill in on weeks that we don't have unless of course i dye more yarn um that we don't have a local yarn shop tour but i still need quite a bit of stuff for the dyeing i really want to get some dharma acid dyes but i need to get a respirator mask and some goggles i found some on amazon i don't know the quality of them or whatever i actually found one i think for like 20 or 26 dollars that was the mask and the glasses um i need to get you know graduated beakers and and squeeze bottles and more syringes and reusable zip ties because these were regular zip ties um and um so so many things i need to get a steamer pot um i have one from pampered chef but i told my mom i don't know that i want to you know use a pampered chef that that wasn't cheap i mean i think i got it for free with my show but still it's not cheap i and and once it goes you know i i just i want to have it dedicated so anyway i do have some more stuff i need to pick up to you know do some more um experimentation when it comes to yarn dyeing but i hope you guys enjoyed this video i look forward to hearing your responses thank you all so incredibly much for your support and um for your enthusiasm behind my yarn dyeing um uh journey uh, you guys are awesome we we talked about it um on the live last week but anyway so have a great day have a great week uh you i'll see you guys tuesday night uh 9 30 p.m eastern otherwise you will see me on wednesday with our next um two local or not local online um small businesses 
So Miley says hi and bye to her peeps. My mom, of course, says hello. And um, we both thank you, as always, for all the thoughts and prayers. You guys are definitely, just you guys are amazing. I mean, seriously, you guys are amazing. And uh, thank you for the prayers for our, our friend at the office, as well as my friend who had surgery last week. Um, and continued prayers and thoughts for them would be awesome. Thank you so incredibly much. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. Love, hugs, and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those who need it. And, um, yeah, I think I covered it all. So, this is Monday. Um, this stuff was up on Friday because it was leading into our Easter. And these are Ukrainian pieces as well as a pisanka right here. I want to be able to bring out a few more pisankas, even though Easter is over, we still decorate the house, or not the house, but we still have them all over the house. My mom actually has an ostrich egg that was um, painted as a, or done as a pisanka. It's gorgeous. But anyway, um, so yeah, we'll see what happens this week on the scape. But have a great day. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.